Hello and welcome to another major market movements end of the week market review for July 24th, 2015. I'm Kwa and in this video we're taking a look at the PM complex starting off with gold. Here we're uh, looking at a one hour chart and we got this nice pop up today. Uh, if we go to the one hour you can see that we close uh, as a ha uh, hammer candle, uh, bullish, uh, setting a key low at uh, 10.76.77 and it also uh, it engulfs the last yesterday's um, bearish candle so it it's also a um, outside key reversal as well almost a double if we had closed just a little bit higher we may have engulfed that second um, negative day as well uh, not quite there but uh, uh, if we go back in the one hour here, the, the, um, we also have a key top right here at about uh, 11.05. All right. So I think what we're going to see is um, this market, we could, right now we only have three legs up. We've got a one, two, three. Um, we don't have a solid completed five-wave impulse yet. Um, I, I see that as a, a possibility going forward. If the the market early next week kind of channel uh, chops sideways just underneath maybe 11.05, maybe pops up above it for a fifth wave, and then maybe settle back into a three-wave uh, corrective move to the downside for a wave two, and then maybe a stronger pop uh, higher after that. That's certainly a possibility. The other possibility I see um, is that this is just a, uh, a fourth wave or uh, part of a fourth wave correction to the upside if we stay underneath 1105 um, that may chop sideways a little bit more and maybe give one more incremental low um, here in another possibly next week or the week thereafter um, I'll show you that in more detail here in a moment the um, uh, actually I'm on that set of pains let's go to this one here okay so uh, gold on the QG3 uh, you can see here uh, I talked about earlier how we had with this uh, capitulation to the downside it drug that 3 EMA underneath the uh, lower Bollinger Band for a while we tucked back inside and now we're starting to see a correction and uh, that's all very well as as it should be expected um, and the also the price is closing just up above the uh, 3 EMA as well uh, that's also an indication that we have started a corrective move and we finished the previous impulse to the downside uh, gold spot on the weekly uh, we didn't get a, a strong positive weekly close not a hammer candle or anything uh, but we might see something next week possibly a harami I uh, see that developing possibly next week or um, uh, a weekly hammer candle if we get one more incremental low next week so uh, either way um, I'm looking forward to seeing some kind of positive um, close on the week uh, next week um, obviously if we get if next week comes down and closes underneath this week's low that's going to be um, additionally bearish and could uh, drop the price even further but um, with how other things are looking I don't um, expect that to, to be the case I think at the most we may get an uh, intraweek low um, at the most uh, maybe one more shot lower and then pop back up maybe to form a um, a hammer candle for the for next week possibly all right so the EWO here we on the daily we don't really have a positive divergence set up yet um, we do have a lower low in price but the oscillator comes down and pretty much matches up with the last uh, low which did produce a bounce so um, not as strong as a bottom bottoming signal as uh, I may prefer I also want to take a look at the weekly. I haven't looked at that yet. Uh, on the weekly, we do have the um, actually a, a double positive divergence on the weekly. If you go all the way back here to the June 2013 low, uh, you can see that we 
we've exceeded that low once and now twice but all the while the oscillator has stayed above this low and then this low is currently above this last low so we're creating a divergence and this is a double on the weekly so that's that's positive if as long as we don't produce a new low in the oscillator underneath this last swing low here at about 76 or so the RSI um, on the daily we haven't seen we don't have a positive divergence there on the daily um, but if we back out here actually I got a better chart for this to show you here in a moment uh, so I won't go into it here but um, uh, but on the daily here we back out and we do have we're still in positive divergence territory going all the way back here to the uh, July uh, 2013 low June 2000, 2013 low excuse me um, we still have a positive divergence even though we have a lower low in price we still have a higher low in the oscillator uh, and on the weekly MACD we're uh, very open to the downside there on the weekly but on the daily uh, we can see the histogram bars are uh, shrinking just a bit we may be rolling over here um, as we go into next week possibly um, so overall for gold uh, there's a good chance right now of a bounce um, up to at least 1130 maybe even 1140 um, but it's all going to depend primarily on getting above the short-term swing high there at about 1105 if we get above that then I think we're good to go for a nice bounce up maybe to test the uh, the 20 DMA which is currently sliding down into uh, the lower 40s maybe upper 30s by the time we get there um, I can see that happening but we got to clear that 1105 hurdle first um, if we double back early next week and come back down and confirm that this was just a three-wave move then uh, I think we'll slip down a little bit further maybe into um, the, the 1060s um, possibly as low as uh, 1040 uh, I'll have to wait and see okay uh, let's go on to silver here All right, so silver, uh, the daily close, closes as a uh, long-legged doji here, uh, hammer candle, if you will. And that might set a key low there at uh, 1437. Didn't go as far down as I would have preferred. Uh, I would have liked to have seen it challenge that uh, $14 to uh, 1420 range. Um, it could still do that, but it's going to take, uh, if we get a bounce here, it could take a few more days before we... Uh, or actually a few weeks before we come back down um, to test that area uh, and uh, but for now with this hammer candle I think uh, there's good reasons for the a potential pop-up from here um, the Elliott waves are also pointing to a potential bottom here as well and I'll go into that in just a just a moment uh, the QG3 on silver is still bearish to the downside obviously um, and for silver, we do not close above the 3 EMA, so we're still in that um, um, in the territory of an impulse to the downside. And silver spot on the weekly, we don't get a, uh, a hammer candle on the week either, um, and we actually close, make a new um, a weekly close even lower this week as well. Um, and the EWO on the daily, we do have a um, positive divergence set up here. Going back to this swing low, we got a lower low in price, higher low in the oscillator. So that's it, setting up a positive divergence. Um, in silver, and same thing with the RSI on the daily and silver uh, MACD on the weekly is open to the downside daily is open to the downside as well
So that's bearish. So silver, um, I do think there's a there's a chance that we could see a bounce here off of this um, long-legged doji uh, going into next week. And uh, I'll give you some clues uh, with uh, the Elliott Wave charts here as to what needs to take shape uh, in order for that to happen. All right. Uh, I'm going to skip platinum and go right into the Elliott Wave charts. If, uh, if by the way, you are actively trading uh, platinum based upon this analysis, uh, please send me an email or uh, some kind of feedback. Let me know that you are interested in platinum. Um, yeah, most I have not gotten any feedback from anybody talking about uh, trading platinum, so um, I'm not going to spend a much bunch of time doing going over an analysis of a of a market that. Um, uh, most of my subscribers are not terribly interested in. All right, so let's go to uh, gold here. All right, so this is what I'm looking at in the the micro LA wave count uh, that I can see taking place here. Is that after this plunge, I think what we saw here was a ABC up for an A, ABC down for a B, and then a one, two, three, four, five up for a C for a contracted three, three, five flat count. And then we saw wave one down, wave two, wave three, and I think this is part of uh, this bounce up could be part of wave four in an expanding uh, diagonal, ending, expanding ending diagonal uh, type of formation. Um, if that's true, the price would have to keep, must keep below 1105, and then trace out um, a sideways choppy move for maybe another contracted flat or triangle of some kind, some kind of flat correction to alternate with the sharp wave two back here. And then uh, one more move down into wave five, which may come uh, possibly sometime next week, um, as late as the following week after next week. That's that's another possibility. Um, so I see that uh, that particular uh, pattern possibly taking place. The other thing uh, that could kill uh, this incremental bearish scenario is to see this move to the upside complete five waves up, uh, preferably above 1105, so that we have a way, uh, small one, small two, small three, somewhere in here, maybe pull back into a four, and then one more push up into five for a initial impulse to the upside for wave one, and then a pull back into um, a sub wave two with a three wave move to the downside, and then we'll uh, fly on up higher um, after that. So those are the two scenarios that I can see uh, that we could be uh, looking for in the in the days ahead. Um, uh, gold here. Why did I pull this one up? I think that was a mistake. Currently, yeah, we did drop below that uh, blue trend line, and we're currently uh, underneath it, so that could be a key level of resistance for for right now. Um, but I wanted to go into something else here. Uh, here's the uh, Huey Gold uh, ratio, and you see that we're uh, into unprecedented levels here. Basically, the Huey uh, is uh, at a tenth of what. The uh, you could buy the Huey for a tenth of what an ounce of gold is right now, <laughs> which is just uh, you know it's at ridiculous levels, uh, extremely oversold, um, yeah, miner market right now, precious metal mining market. Um, so this is good reasoning for watching for a bottom to see these kinds of extremes. Um, also, here's the gold on the. Uh, the RSI over the long term. This is the daily chart, and you see here. I uh, pointed this out in a previous report, but I'll go over it here. Uh, this recent push to the downside has tested the uh, has actually sunk below the 20 level just slightly, and you see other times that the 20 level has been challenged. We've seen a significant lows before a pop up. Uh, here's a it wasn't a really just a short term low, and then a sm very small pop up. Low pop up, low pop up, and um, the last two that have touched that 20 level, we've seen some uh, 
rises here. This was this one popped up from uh, the 11:30 level, came all the way up here to 1300. All right, so about a 170 point uh, move to the upside off of that touch of the 20 level. So that's the kind of results that I think we could be expecting coming up out of this low. Um, let's move on here. Uh, the, uh, oh wait, no, let me back up here. Uh, let me go into, nope, that's not what I'm looking for. All right, hold on. I, I, I will say this, let me go into here. Let me zoom in on this a bit. Um, one thing, if we do see the the another leg down, it gives us an incremental low underneath that uh, 1071 into the 1060 area possibly. Um, I do think that lower low will produce a positive divergence um, in the RSI between this last swing low here uh, in price and a new incremental low. Lower low in price, but probably a higher low in the oscillator producing a positive divergence. Yeah, I can see that taking shape. Um, let's look on to silver. All right, so silver here, this is my midterm count. This is the one that makes the most sense to me. Could it be something else? Could it be, could this be a major low here and, um, and deny the possible final fifth of C? Uh, to come later on in the year? Yes, it could. But in order to deny that move to the downside, the price would have to come up here and exceed um, the uh, 1775 level or so. Uh, at least challenge it, if not exceed it. Uh, that would wash out the, that potential to the downside. But um, for now, all I'm expecting is uh, this wave three to end, which it could very well have ended uh, today and start of the wave four bounce, which I think could come up to the uh, the mid uh, 16 level, uh, right around here, maybe fill in some of this manic drop. You can see that taking shape for uh, wave four, and then another uh, move to the downside to complete this uh, Adam Eve double bottom type scenario. So here's another reason I think that we could have bottomed in silver is uh, here's that wave two top that uh, is right here. And um, I've been following this count for a while, though um, uh, actually I, I changed it today because I realized that this little this little uh, hair that poked up, this was a, uh, a opening weekend pop up on the 12th, on Sunday. As uh, Sunday opened up, we got this very brief uh, pop to the upside and then uh, a reversal uh, that was shown in the trading view charts. But um, on the NetDanya charts, we look at that same uh, space right here on opening of July 12th, uh, that weekend, we do not see the same degree of uh, a pop to the upside taking out this last swing high. So, with that, I think, as I looked into today, this count popped up at me. If we disregard this hair, um, I think it's reasonable to count this as a completed five-wave structure, impulsive structure to the downside, with a wave one, wave two, wave one, wave two, uh, wave three, wave four. Uh, all of these waves are alternating with uh, the corrective modes between sharp and flat. We've got a wave three here finished, a contracting wave uh, four flat, and then uh, we've been working on this final fifth to the downside with a one, two, sharp, three, four flat, uh, contracted flat, and now this wave five to the downside could be complete. So I want to zoom in on that. And I think what we could be seeing here is, uh, let me zoom in on the time scale. Go to 15 minutes. So it does look like me to me that we've got a completed impulse to the upside with a, a wave one, two, three, uh, or three, four, five possibly. So we could have a wave uh, initial wave one up, 
and now we could be pulling back into a subwave two, which would also could also be a right shoulder of a bullish uh, inverted head and shoulders pattern. Uh, this being the left shoulder, left neckline. This is the head. This would be the right shoulder, and then we might see a pullback, uh, a three wave pullback into a corrective wave two, um, possibly down here into the mid fourteen dollar level for a right shoulder and then we'll be ready to uh, pop up to the upside. Um, so uh, I think it's worthwhile here. I mean, if we do, we're able to get in here in the mid $14 level, um, our risk is all the way down here to $14.36 um, or so, or we'd put our stops just below that, maybe into $14.30. Uh, I think it would probably be reasonable. So, um, uh, you know, we're risking maybe um, 20, 30 cents here to get in long and right about in this level. So uh, that's pretty darn cheap for uh, the upside potential. So I think uh, we're going to take a shot at it, uh, get in long here on a uh, three-wave pullback uh, next week. For silver, uh, for sure. Uh, gold, uh, maybe. I want to give that a little bit more time, I think. And uh, we'll take a look at GDX here. All right, so GDX uh, also... Uh, been moving into extreme territories here and this major wave two could be complete let me back out of here um, here's a, a wave wave B was completed all the way back up here in uh, September of 2011 and we've got I've, I counted as a an A B C X A B C X, you can't see it, it's buried there. And now we're working on a final uh, triple zigzag to the downside uh, for the final wave two. That's one way I can I can count it. Um, the other way that I see, the other potential that I see here is that this is a wave one, a wave two, a wave three, a wave four. Uh, wave two was flat, contracted flat, actually a running flat. And then... Um, Wave four was sharp, so that alternates. So that that's appropriate. Um, so if that count is correct, we are not yet finished with wave five, which means this could be a wave one, wave two. We might be completing wave three, getting a wave four bounce uh, up here into the maybe the sixteen dollar level, and then one more um, capitulative low to finish the five wave move. So. This this could be a major low. It may not be a major low, but I think with as extreme as things are, it's worth a shot. It's worth uh, uh, rolling the dice because I think the probabilities are in our favor for at least a bounce up, maybe a po the possibility of a major low. If it is a major low, we're going to need to see the price move up very quickly, very impulsively uh, back up here to take out this last swing high. Midterm swing high there at about uh, $21. Challenge it or exceed it uh, would be enough. And then we might pull back into uh, right shoulder, and then it's uh, um, gangbusters to the upside. So that's what I'm looking at. If we zoom in here a little bit closer, it's, um, you know, just a few days ago here uh, in the opening of the week, we had this uh, capitulation to the downside. Largest volume ever for GDX. Um, I'll just pull it back here and just give you a good look at it. Here's here's where we are in that volume. Never in the history of GDX has, have we seen that much volume. And when you get that kind of volume at the end of a downtrend, um, it's it's uh, typical of a major bottom because you're getting everybody, all the bears are. Uh, are throwing in the towel, basically. And uh, today, we basically book in this week with the largest positive um, divergence uh, or uh, volume ever in this uh, market. So that also comes at the end of what looks like uh, nine waves to the downside with uh, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight, eight, and nine. Also, the day closes as a bullish piercing bottom uh, candle pattern, 
which means that uh, a piercing bottom means that the day, in this case the, peri the period is a day, but uh, the period opens up with a gap to the downside. So we opened up down here from yesterday's close, which was a little bit higher. So we gapped down, uh, the intraday moved down a little bit more, and then came right back up and closed well above the midpoint of the previous um, solid candle to the downside. The midpoint would probably was roughly right around about 1392, 1391, and you can see we closing at 1407 uh, confirms the the piercing bottom pattern that sets a key low at uh, 1317. All right, so I think this is a good bottom and it's well worth getting into, but uh, there is a chance that we could see. A little bit of corrective action going into next week. Um, I didn't want to get everybody long going into the weekend uh, just yet, because um, uh, the weekends are notorious for uh, causing all kinds of whipsaws and what what have you, based upon whatever news comes into uh, comes in over the the weekend. You can get um, traders that are probably terribly anxious right now, especially in this market. Um, get them um, uh, bailing or uh, uh, you know, doing all kinds of crazy stuff going into early next week. So um, I think it's just best to wait um, to go into Monday. We'll see what the uh, gold and silver are doing at the opening of the week, and that will give us a good idea of uh, how to dive into uh, GDX on Monday. All right. So go along here. also want to show you here is GDX on the weekly, and I wanted to show you Look at this weekly candle. It's it's like abandoned. It's uh, way outside the Bollinger Band on the weekly basis. All right, that's just unheard of. You just don't see that kind of behavior in a market like this. So this tells me that uh, uh, in a market that's already uh, you know sold off as much as it has, to have this kind of behavior tells me this is just plain old plain old fearful capitulation. In a market, uh, you're getting the final uh, holders of, um, of miners just throwing in the towel and just senselessly selling it down here because it makes no sense for the price action to be that far below the uh, the Bollinger Bands. I don't think if you go back in here in history, you'll ever see. I mean, this this area right here came pretty close, and you can see the price ducked back in into the uh, sanity of the Bollinger Bands. Uh, went down a little bit more and then uh, popped back up, but um, that was fairly close, but not nearly as extreme. Um, we did get some closes above the uh, Bollinger Bands here, and then saw a very strong reversal. Um, so we could be getting into that kind of territory. Um, and go back here a little bit further in territory. Uh, here again, we saw the uh, this strong move to the outside of the Bollinger Band on the weekly basis, and then quickly got a turnaround and a pull bar right back inside. Wasn't a major top, but uh, it definitely caused a top for a few weeks. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Um, so, pretty exciting stuff. You don't see this, you don't see this every day, I'll tell you. Um, and if we go to the daily, um, you can see that extreme that caused the uh, 3 EMA to duck underneath the Bollinger Band, uh, caused the the uh, price to come back inside the Bollinger Bands as anticipated. Um, this drop back down to test the lower Bollinger Band and the bounce up, that is all very bullish behavior. And you can see also we're closing above the 3 EMA, so that's also bullish. So. All, all in all, some really good indications that we may have bottomed here today and ready for at least a significant bounce may, up to the $16 level, maybe much higher than that. We'll see. Um, here's GDXJ um, on the uh, daily. And I wanted to point out that we did get the outside key reversal on the daily, so that's bullish. And if we go to the weekly, also, we're closing uh, above the 3 EMA also in this market. Uh, so we're it's a good indication that we're completing our impulse to the downside and starting a corrective move. And if we go to the weekly, 
You can see here also, uh, the week is just way out here outside the Bollinger Bands. It's like, uh, it just doesn't happen. Uh, you're also getting the three, on the weekly, you're getting the three EMA closing right at the uh, lower Bollinger Band, which if you go back here in history, um, you just don't see that 3 EMA coming very close to the um, the Bollinger Bands at all. And the last time it happened was back here at this significant top, this overblown top. Um, and you can see we got maybe uh, one week that closed right at the um, uh, the 3 EMA closing right at the Bollinger Band. And then what happened? That was a very major top, and we got a huge slide to the downside. So. That's the kind of territory we're in, folks. Hope you can appreciate it. Uh, hopefully we can uh, take advantage of it as well. All right, let's look into uh, the GDX on the RSI. On the weekly scale, we've got the double positive divergence in place. Um, on the oscillator, we got two lower lows in the, the last swing low at this uh, oscillator bottom. And both of these oscillators are at higher higher lows. So uh, double positive divergence. And on the daily, also wanted to show you that on the daily RSI, we do have a little positive divergence here. We've got a lower low in the price and a higher low in the oscillator. So that's also another positive uh, identifier. All right, so this is... Um, really good area for to take a stab at the long side. Maybe it'll just be a simple bounce for a few weeks, but uh, I think it's going to be well worth it. Uh, could it be a major bottom? Sure, but it's uh, it's going to have to proof itself with uh, a, a stronger advance um, with GDX going up that 21 level dollar level or more. So, all right. Uh, hope you all have a great weekend, and we'll be talking to you later. Adios.